damn it, just put an egg in your cocktail. It's yummy. We're gonna be continuing on with some Prohibition classic style cocktails. This is gonna be the White Lady. Um, I love gin cocktails, mainly because I like Prohibition cocktails. And this is Prohibition is when cocktails really, really started to form as a recipe, um, mainly because the spirits that were being made during Prohibition were being made illegally, so they really didn't taste good. So they had to add juices and sweeteners and bitters to them to make them palatable. And this is where the, in my opinion, the birth of cocktails really started, really started to flourish, I should say. Because from this point on, this one you'll see lime juice, lemon juice, orange juice, um, sweeteners mixed into the spirits to create really, really, um, multi-layered complex cocktails. Uh, so this is one of the reasons I love Prohibition cocktails just as much as I love Tiki cocktails. So we're gonna get started with the White Lady. So we're gonna start off with two ounces of our gin. Um, I'm using Sugarfields Gin. If you, so if you're in Louisiana, make sure you grab some Sugarfields Gin. Um, it is my opinion, the perfect balance between a New World style gin, which is those more citrus forward and less botanical, and those uh, more London dry style gins, which are really heavy juniper, heavy botanicals, very piney. Um, this is that perfect balance. Because I find out some of the, the American style gins, the New World, American style, whatever y'all want to call them, um, they kind of lose some of the gin um, in a mixed drink uh, with other ingredients. Um, this one, not so much. Um, the guy is at Sugarfields, Andrew. I think this was Andrew's recipe himself. This was his baby, one of the owners. Did a wonderful job with this. So if you're in Louisiana, Gonzales, Baton Rouge area, stop by, pick up a bottle of their gin. And it's available in a lot of places in the Baton Rouge area now. I know that. So that's two ounces of our gin. Enough talking about Sugarfields. Let's get a cocktail making. We go with a half ounce of fresh lemon juice. This is gonna have one gram of carbs. Is that my half ounce? Half ounce, right on the money. And then one half ounce of our triple sec, our low carb triple sec. This one, ah, you can see the color. Came out looking like orange juice, I'm not sure why. I've been making triple sec the same way, orange liqueur, for three years now, and this is the first time this has happened. So I don't know, but it tastes amazing. A little more opaque like orange juice than I would like, but uh, we'll see how it happens in a cocktail. I don't know what's gonna happen with this one. Half ounce. So two ounces of gin, half ounce of orange liqueur, half ounce of lemon juice, and this is where a lot of people are gonna lose their mind. Let me go with an egg white. Now, with eggs in your cocktail, the citrus juice, from what I understand, it's supposed to like, you know, the citric acid is supposed to like basically kill any bacteria. It's in it. Damn it, just put an egg in your cocktail. It's yummy. It really enhances the mouth feel of it. Um, it lets those layers linger longer in the mouth. So you have just a much more complex flavor profile that you're tasting over a longer period. It's good, just trust me. Put an egg white in your cocktail. So we're gonna go in our other cocktail tin just to make sure we don't mess it up. And so we're gonna go here with one egg white. There we go. One, drop the whole damn egg in there, son of a bitch. This is why, <laughs> this is why you don't put it in the drink. Do your egg whites separately. Son of a bitch, I'll be right back. Let me go get another egg white and um, fix this. All right, let's try this again. So let's get just the white. There we go, one more time. There we go, one egg white. Now we're gonna do what's called a dry shake and um, might want some paper towels or a kitchen towel, something around for that. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna shake the egg white with the cocktail to create a froth. And doing so, um, you're not gonna have the ice to um, condense the metal tins together to lock it in place. So there more than likely is gonna be a little seepage around the seams. So put your cocktail 
in there and just stuff a paper towel around in the seams where that goes. There we go. In a dry shake, uh, a good thing is about 20, 30 seconds to build a nice hard froth. So let's go ahead and give this a shake. And let's get this pushed in a little bit tighter. All right, let's go. All right, like I said, yeah, there's a little bit coming out. Let's clean that off real quick. Because yeah, because when you're shaking with ice, uh, it contracts the metal and keeps it from leaking. Uh, you don't have that luxury here. Oh, that's beautiful and nice and frothy, nice and frothy. So next we're gonna do a wet shake and that is with ice. Put all our ingredients together. Nice hard tap and let's get a good shake on this. All right, that tin is cold. That is nice and frothy, beautiful cocktail. So in our chilled cocktail glass, um, you can go ahead and like I said, use a, something with a bigger, string, a bigger spring. And the pinion comes with a larger spring, but I have these basic ones just for this situation. And pour all that in there. There you go. No need for garnish. It's a beautiful cocktail as it is. So this cocktail was originally created by Harry McElhone, um, who was a famous bartender in the 1900s during Prohibition. Um, he was a, a really well-renowned bartender back then. Um, and he eventually ended up buying um, Harry's New York bar in Paris, France. Um, the original cocktail had creme de menthe. Later on in 1929, he omitted the creme de menthe. And um, some say, it was a great idea to admit that uh, because this is an extremely well-balanced cocktail. Uh, let's hey, enough talking. Let's drink. That is absolutely amazing. That gin, uh, the Sugarfields gin specifically. I mean, use your favorite gin. I'm not. I'm not. Who am I to say anything else? Use your favorite gin. It's an absolutely amazing gin to use. But. That gin, that lemon juice, and it's just that touch of orange flavor from the orange liqueur. Um, and that egg white, like I mentioned, it just lets the cocktail linger in your mouth a little bit longer. Adds a little bit heavier viscosity. Um, a wonderful mouth feel. So if you're not using egg whites in cocktails that call for them, try it out, try it out. I've been drinking whiskey sours, white ladies, clover clubs, all kinds of stuff with egg whites and I've not died yet. So hey, Try it, you'll be surprised. But please, click the subscribe button right here. Click that subscribe button. That helps me out. That lets YouTube know you enjoy my content and uh, it'll share with other people. Hell, you share my content with other people. That would help out too. So y'all have a great day. After this white lady, I'll be having an amazing night. See y'all later. Oh yes, the white lady. Thank you, Harry McElhone.